every single session. She did really, really well with that. So thank you, Christina Wong, for joining us. While Jeff is getting set up, I just wanted to say two things. At the end, we have a little something special for all of you, so if you can mosey to that area, and then Kayla and Zach will actually help us out back here to give you a little something for all of your hard work this year. And then you all are like really important favorite people to me, but there's also some other important people that I forgot to mention, and they are our staff and our administration. So I'd like to just quickly recognize them, and then we're going to turn the stage over to Jeff. So in the back is Zach, is Zach can wait. He's one of our new vocal teachers. Woo! Because we want our words to encompass the depth and the meaning of that celebration, to inspire us. We choose words that invoke history, progress, accomplishment. We choose words that evoke pride, community, people, and faith. Words that remember those individuals who, through their perseverance, created this land we call home, Nebraska. And to quote another author, Moments such as these remind us that who we are is who we were. Here are two short poems, both from Nebraska authors. The first is from a farmer's wife who lived in Swanton, Nebraska. She was born in Illinois in 1856 and wrote this on or around 1876. M. W. Westcott, wherefore, I thought this was especially appropriate. From whence comes this heavenly music, playing ever round my heart? And what means these haunting voices, voices that will not depart? Do they come down from the valley that's been flooded with my tears? Do they stay to urge me onward to the unknown wealth of years? Do they think to lift me higher, make me richer than before? and bring to mind the sweet memories of past loves and lore. Blessed then their tireless vigil, I will heed their gladsome strain, and I will listen to their music while I reap life's golden grain. The second one is an anonymous author, Nebraska as well, and it's called The Good Life. Smack in the middle of our great nation is a state that requires some explanation. To east and west coasters who'll come right out and ask you, is there anything of interest in the state of Nebraska? It's true, we don't have mountains all decked out in snow, but we do have the world's biggest live chicken show. We're the makers of Span, we invented Kool-Aid, and this is where the first Reuben sandwich was made. Our insect, the honeybee, our bird, the meadow lark, the strobe light, our creation works best in the dark. Governmentally speaking, we're a freak of nature since we have the only one house legislature. On Arbor Day, when you plant a tree, remember that it 
it started in Nebraska City. We were once called a desert, but that didn't take. Since we have the country's largest underground lake, we have the world's largest forest planted by hand and more miles of rivers than any state in the land. The College World Series calls Omaha home, and yes, this is where the buffalo used to roam. We were the first state of the nation to finish our interstate section and the first to run two women in the gubernatorial election. We invented 911, emergency communication, and we're the number one producer of center pivot irrigation. Our woolly mammoth fossil is the largest ever found, and our monumental car hedge is certain to abound. We have several museums that could be called odd, dedicated to Chevys, quilts, fur trading, roller skates, and salt. In Blue Hill, Nebraska, no woman wearing a hat can eat onions in public. Imagine that. We built the largest porch swing and indoor rainforest, and anyone who visits is sure to adore us. We are proud of our football, Huskers, born and bred. Every Saturday in the fall, we're all in. Go Big Red. So pack up the kiddies, the pets, and the wife, and go see why Nebraska is called the good life.